in a world where laughter was king. Uh, no in a world, Jack. What do you mean, no in a world? It's not that kind of movie. Oh? Okay. In a land that... No in a land either. In a time... Nah, I don't think so. In a land before time... It's about a comedian, Jack. One man... No... When your life is no longer your own... What, what does that mean? When everything you know is wrong... That's wrong. In an outpost... No... On the edge of space... There's no space... A girl... No... Two girls... No... Now... No... More than ever... Stop it... A renegade cop... Ugh, I hate you... A robot renegade cop... You're fired... You're fired... No, you're actually fired. I'm fired. Get out of the booth, Jack. No, I like it in here. the world still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it so. Kyrie, the earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, scanning world events. It's pretty quiet down there, like someone is waiting to move their piece on the board. What will that move be, and when? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at MarkSarchant.com, EnclosedWorld.com, or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you still believe in NASA. What good are you? For those of you listening to this on YouTube and want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Tonight is December the 6th, 2016. If you are not listening to this on December 6th, 2016, do not call in because this is a live show. Phone number to call in because we are going to be taking calls tonight is 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery. It's a little bit of a longer one, but I'm going to read it. In a way, the world view of the party imposed itself most successfully on people incapable of understanding it. They could be made to accept the most flagrant violations of reality because they never fully grasped the enormity of what was demanded of them and were not sufficiently interested in public events to notice what was happening. By lack of understanding, they remained sane. They simply swallowed everything. And what they swallowed did them no harm because it left no residue behind, just as a grain of corn will pass undigested through the body of a bird. That was from George Orwell. The book was 1984. Uh, before we do anything else, a uh, quick call out to, um, uh, actually we should do the Jeffrey Gop 
rub challenge. Anyone wants to debate against uh, flat Earth from a professional standpoint, I don't care what uh, profession you're coming from. It's got to you know have something to do with how the world is shaped, though. In, in, so even even remotely, uh, Jeffrey Grupp uh, from Zeteticism.com is looking for people. Would love to set him up with you guys uh, to to debate against. So far, the guests we have had on the show since uh, Strange World started uh, eighty two weeks ago tonight. Uh, United States Navy missile instructor, U.S. Air Force navigator, United States Marine Corps sniper instructor, United States Navy submarine chief, United States Army artillery radar operator, an Australian intelligence officer, an American flight instructor, an industrial engineer specializing in valves and seals, a career surveyor of 32 years. That's planar, not geodetic. International shipping expert, corporate travel agent, air traffic controller, United States Army master gunner, Aviation and ground training combat expert, a USDA surveyor, a 32nd degree mason, an etheric science researcher, a commercial airline captain, and a merchant marine. If anyone else, you know, wants to uh, reinforce what any of those guys have said, want to come out against them, I'll I'll take either. But uh, we've got a heck of a list of guests so far. Tonight we are doing emails and calls, so please do call in. In the meantime, let's get to some of the emails. This first email is from John. And uh, this actually ties in with a video I made earlier this week. Uh, the video was called um, uh, Flat Earth License Plate Compilation because, as most of you know, because uh, I put it on banners and it's all over everything I do, uh, I put on my car, just to show you how much conviction I have for Flat Earth, I did a Flat Earth license plate called It's Flat because most states allow you six or seven or eight letters to me how many people you are in the state. And I'll be darned, I didn't even have to, I didn't tell people to go out and get it. There were more people that started doing flat earth license plates and they accommodated it for six or seven or eight. And we got our first phone call from 435 area code. You are on live with Strange World. Hello. Hi. Hey, um, good to hear you. Um, I'm listening to you. Better just shut off my sound here. So sure. Where, 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 are you, where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Utah. Cool. And, uh, I got my uh, it's flat uh, uh, license plate. Uh, I haven't. They said it they're mailing it this week, so. But I they got me. I got a picture of it. I I, I was going to email it to you, but I, I for some reason I'm a subscriber to your uh, MarkSargent.com site too. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, but I I, gotcha. I couldn't find your email address. So. Oh, it's it. You know what? It's <laughs> ev- it's everywhere. It's 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 not that hard. But I'll give it to you right now. You ready? Oh. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, it is, and you can just go. By the way, if you if you screw this up, it's okay because any every one of my YouTube videos, it's on there. Oh, okay. uh, and it's and it's also in the description. But it is M as in Mark Sargent S A R G E N T twenty three at Comcast dot net. Okay. And yeah, I I didn't you send me an email saying that that you were going to get the Utah plate. Uh, I I don't think I did, but the thing about my Utah plate, it's really cool because it has the uh, the arch, the big arch. It's kind of a uh, orangey kind of red color, nice, and it has this flat horizon. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. (laughs) <laughs> looks that's so good. that's that's awesome and uh, and thank you thank you very much for doing that again it's 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 a cool little club and what i was trying to explain to people uh and i'll, I'll read this email after i get off with you but that you know most most personalized plates and i know it's the united states thing uh you can do six letters seven letters or eight letters and uh, i'm surprised some of the states that do six but two states i knew do eight and that's new york and california i think so, uh, but that's yeah, great. That's fantastic. Well, I looked at that. Uh, then my uh, niece saw it. Uh, by the way, we're all just giving up. Everybody I tell, I'm not afraid to tell anybody about flat Earth anymore. I just let, I just let it all hang out. And, sure. And uh, and she's saying I'm going to get one. that says I T Z flat. It's flat. Nice, so. <laughs> nice. And that would sort of be kind of a, a variation of the uh, the California plate. If you saw uh-huh. that one in my in my video where the guy did. And I don't know if it's because it's flat was chosen, but he he did ITB flat. Oh, okay. So it be flat. It it be flat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it be flat. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. So that's oh. that's yeah yeah. So and again, you know, it doesn't have to be it's flat. You know, other people like uh, Patricia Steer did uh, uh, flat Earth, but she abbreviated it. 
and yeah, exactly. uh, other people are you know you you know do whatever you want as long as you get the message across. You know, it's flat, which is what came to me. But I'm now I'm jealous of the New York one because you can use all eight letters. Where yeah, all eight, yeah. Just, it, well, you know like, what? It's just catch. It's in. But I like to play that. Uh, you know, when the the Matrix and the guy saying, "You hear that, Mr. Smith? It's inevitable. It's and that's what flat Earth is. It's just going to roll over. But there's no fight in this. This is so yeah. Yeah. absolutely positively. I I told a guy fixing our. Uh, he was come up and put our uh, oven in our house and. Uh, and he was saying, I says, you want to hear something really weird? And he says, what? He says, this is crazy. And he says, okay. I says, the earth's flat. He says, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so we had to have some work done. We called down at his store, and he, and he answered the phone, and he, and he, he runs his own business. He said, oh, I remember you guys. You know what? It's freaking flat. I can't believe it. <laughs> so yeah. He went and checked it out, and uh, oh, yeah. it's... The- the only argument, and and the reason, one of the reasons why you know it's such a high retention, you know, the ninety nine point nine percent retention rate in the flat Earth community, and the reason why they, you know, nobody's going back to the to the sphere is because the only argument most people have against it is that flat Earth is stupid. Right. They, like, they, that's, they, that, they never address any facts. Too. No, no. It's like is you know yeah fine you might be able to touch. You know, it's like, well, what about this? You know, what about the sun or what about this plane flight? Where it's like, dude, for every question you've got, we've got five to ten that you cannot answer. Right. And, I mean, you math, know, I mean, simple math just kills you. Oh, yeah. Kills it. I mean, it's, you know, the, the thing about it, Mark, is I was geocentric uh, um, uh, for oh, seven years, six, seven years, somewhere in that area. Yeah. And I just couldn't get to the flat part. You know, yeah. I just kept coming against it. and. You know, and my cognizant dissonance was just, you know, was just resisting me so bad. Oh, yeah. And then, and then when the math, when I got the math, because I've always been a, like a mathematician, I said, oh, my goodness, you can't argue with that. That yeah. is just so absolutely unarguable. Oh, yeah. That, and, I'm, and then, it, of course, every else thing else goes. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I'm doing, an, I'm doing an interview tomorrow night, and I'm kind of hoping now that, that more of my interviews are going to be, you know, uh, confrontational, you know. Where where they're going to come at me because they're going to say, well, how did you get into this? And I I think I came up with the answer that that I, I want to give from this point out. And as I got into this because I tried to debunk it, I I, right. I, I somebody I saw a story on flat Earth and I said this is stupid and I I can absolutely debunk this and I failed and yeah. every and everybody that's in it fails. That's that's what they do. Nobody goes down the road and says, oh, I absolutely debunked it. The only thing they could do is say, well, I didn't really want to look at it, so it's stupid, so therefore I'm still a globalist. But anyway, that's Well, anyway. I got it. I, I was uh, I was, you know, I'm a, a Christian and then I was listening to these old guys and they had a site called the uh, the, uh, the earth is does not move or something like that. It's, uh, he since died just last year, and his yeah. website's been taken down, but he had a lot of interesting stuff on it. And he says, you know, he showed those 67 verses in the Bible that shows that the earth is still and that it's the sun that moves. Yeah. And, and I mean, 67 verses, and you, and you can look at them, and it's indisputable. And if you're going to believe the Bible, then, I mean, you... There's just you, oh yeah, you may, oh yeah, yeah, You yeah. may be able to skirt the flat Earth for a while, but inevitably, you know, the what held me off is I didn't, I couldn't see the model. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't understand the Antarctic went all the way around, and that was the circle of the Earth. Yeah. And and I noticed when you have uh, uh, like that one guy you interviewed on the same station you're on here, you he interviewed you. And he was he just had and and then other interviews I've heard. Especially, you know, some of the things you have to deal with. They don't know what the model is. Yeah. They and so they can't talk to you, and you can't talk to them. It's just, I mean, at least have the courtesy to look at a flat Earth map. You oh know, yeah. And and have some kind of a semblance of. Oh yeah, of, that's uh, that's what Stanton Friedman did to me. You know, the world's greatest UFO researcher, and I knew he was going to do it too because he, you know he, he he when I talked when I was talking to him, you know, we were going to like ten. We were supposed to debate ten minutes in. He goes, mm-hmm. he goes, he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you talking about this like it's a real thing? And I go like a like a literal thing. And I go, yeah. And he goes, you know, how does that work exactly? He because he did not know the model. He's going well, he goes, that, define the, the model for. Me. Yeah, it's the difficulty of arguing this. And it's like he says, look, if you want to debate me first, at least 
find out our viewpoint before you come off here because all it does is make you look more stupider than what we think you are already. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it's not like they're stupid, though. You know, the thing is, oh, I know. Can't, the, we were all the, in the same place at one time or another. Yep. And, and so eventually we come around. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. You know, I you know I, I've listened to all uh, I've listened to you quite a bit. You're definitely you and Eric today, and uh, I don't know why Eric doesn't like you. But ah, no worries. He'll come around eventually. I think so too. But he, I, I did like his last little uh, uh, rap thing. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I love I love that work. I I, I thumbed it thumbed it up. You know, my biggest thing, and I, I've heard your explanation is I've seen the planet planet what they call the planet Saturn yeah. with the ring around it. I've yeah. seen it with my own telescope. You know? Yeah. And, you know, and I almost think, uh, okay, so maybe it is a strong delusion because the only place planet is ever mentioned in the Bible is in a, in a derogatory thing uh, as pagan worship. Yeah. And so, and then, of course, you look at, uh, I've seen the other things with the planet looks like a light behind water and stuff like that. So, uh, uh you know, some of these things, and then the satellite stuff. Uh, uh, oh, I know, I know. I know. And, anyway, but, hey, know, hey, hate, hate to do this to you, but unfortunately, I've got, I've got like a couple no, calls. No, that's that, good. I just wanted to chat with you and give you thumbs up and say keep up the good work. Thank I'm you, man. You. I'm supporting you. I'm on your, uh, your subscription. Thanks, set, so. thanks, thanks very much. God bless you. Keep up the good work, bud. And, and by the way, email me that, that Utah plate as soon as you can. So oh, I can yeah, I'll send it right here as soon as I hang up. I'll All right. It to you. All right. See All you, right. man. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, and real quick, uh, before I read this email, actually, we'll just read this email, and then maybe I can pick up that call that's going to come in in like two seconds. Um, so this was a guy from, which was Delaware that sent me his vanity plate. Cause, and, and people that, you know, when you're looking at the, the compilation, you got to remember that some of these plates, the, the people are so excited to get them. They don't even wait for the plate to come in. They're using the screenshot from the licensing department and every state's got their own licensing software and department. So everyone's going to look slightly different. So if some of them look kind of grainy and blocky, it's not because it's Photoshopped. It's because it's, it's the plate's not there yet. You've still got to wait your, whatever it is. Some, some states can do it in two to three weeks, other four to five. Uh, you know, it's cause it's state government anyway. But as the new, as the official plates come in, anyone that's out there listening, please take a picture of the real plate. It doesn't have to have the stickers on it or anything. Send it to me. I will put it in the uh, in the slideshows and and make a special flat Earth license plate compilation. It's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And be creative. You know, six, seven, eight letters. How would you portray flat Earth in six, seven, or eight letters? And this applies to the United States and Canada. I don't know what the personalized plates are in all the European countries, uh, including England. Not sure. You know, vanity plates were kind of a, an American thing. So anyway, let's finish up this email. Uh, I really like Patricia's F-L-A-T-R-T-H idea for its double entendre. Entendre? Oh, I'll probably pronounce that wrong. Uh, because it could be either mean flat earth or flat truth. Very clever, but I decided to make it simple. Like Sparta's Mol- oh, geez, Molan Labe, Molan Labe. It says so much with very little spoken. I think this claim, it's flat. The conspiracy of conspiracies could well be used as a label on everything wrong with this world. Deception, cover-ups, trolling, the lamestream media's fake news, all flat-out lies. This world is upside down. Left is right and right is wrong. Good is evil and evil is good. But that won't fit on my license plate. It's flat, does. After long ignoring this ridiculous flat earth hoopla, I finally opened my mind. I remembered as a boy seeing Toronto 30 miles across Lake Ontario from the beach at Four Mile Creek State Park in New York. So I did my own flat earth experiment. I drove to Bowers Beach near Dover and could see the sandy beach on Cape May 24 miles away. Lensing and looming aside, that is pretty convincing. Still, my favorite proof is precision gyros that never move and left for hours or forever. The investigation continues. Godspeed, Mark. John, United States Air Force pilot, retired. <laughs> John, if you're listening, if you want, if you want to get an interview, I'd love to get you in here. You know, just just to talk about stuff. If, if you know, you don't have to go the full, you know, four segments. But I'd love, I'd love to get you on the air. So thank you, thank you, John, from the United States Air Force. Uh, let's see who's next. How about Jim? Uh, Jim writes, and I 
can't pronounce that last name. I don't even know if it's his real name. He came up with an acronym, and I hopefully I'll be able to steal it first uh, for NASA. So, you know, most NASA, you know, never a straight answer or not all shuttles arrive or need another seven astronauts, you know, from the space shuttle disaster, blah, blah, blah. But this one's pretty actually pretty good. NASA, not a secret anymore. Jim sent that. And I'd never seen that one before because what he did was kind of clever. He actually used the letter A as part of the sentence, A, instead of actually creating a word from it. So that's awesome, Jim. Thank you. Thank you for that. Moving on, Dan writes, uh, oh, and this is Dan from, uh, normally he's from Whidbey Island. He goes, Mark, how are you enjoying Victoria? Beautiful town, eh? Less boring than South Whidbey Island? Watching Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes 137 right now. Good episode today. I saw you there in your new Victoria location. Yes, I am currently broadcasting. Uh, it is from a large spaceship, but it is hovering over a Victoria home and uh, with my lovely girlfriend, Melody, in the house down below. Hello, Melody. Anyway, she's waving out the window. Uh, let's see here. Who's next? Marty writes. Hey, Mark. Marty from the Ozarks here. I just thought of something that needs to be done since the shortest day of the year will be here soon. Someone with a good camera and light filter should take a few photos of the sun around high noon on December 21st. Then on June 21st, take some more with the same camera from the exact same place. Then take a dial caliper to the photos and measure the size of the sun. If the sun is 93 million miles away, I doubt there will be much difference in its size. But if the sun is close to us, there should be a difference. What do you think? Marty, flat out. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Hard, hard to say, but again, remember with the sky, the illusion's got to, you know, whoever created this place, they, they got to make the illusion pretty good. So um, I don't know if that's going to prove something, but you never know. It's, it's very possible. Uh, I'd like to thank in advance, here's a guy, um, Ted Toth sent me a flat earth watch. And I don't know, I'm not going to have a picture of it on the screen, but it can't be hard to imagine, you know, take the flat earth clock and shrink it down to a watch size. Apparently, he is sending a watch to the Whidbey Island address. So if anybody wants to send me some flatter stuff you want me to promote before Christmas, uh, please send it to or just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. I will give you the Whidbey Island address and you can send it there. But thank you. Thank you, Ted, in advance. I uh, can't wait to get it. When's it supposed to show up? Show up uh, Thursday the 8th. Awesome. That's really, really great. Uh, this one's from... Israel Adams. Hey now, I'm wondering if you might read this on the mailbag show. Well, you lucked out. I I haven't gotten to the mailbag show that, yet this week, so it's going to be on Strange World. And we're still waiting for the calls, and we haven't gotten to our first break yet, so I'm going to read it. So I'm wishing someone might make a video pointing out the connections between NASA and the Vatican. Anyone up for it might go on to illustrate how all space programs of other nations, Russia, China, etc., are just appendages of NASA. The people might more readily wake to the fact that we have long since been monopolized as a species by realizing this. This can be proven also by the fact that the creation of the dialects is a repeatable process showing monopol monopolization at least since Babel, he means the Tower of Babel, Oh, that's Old Testament, by the way. And obviously before, also the legal precedents showing every nation is contracted to the Holy Vatican, as well as every citizen and the Pope being the head permanent observer of the UN. It's long past time for us as a species to mature, stop fighting amongst ourselves. Uh, we got to take this call. This is from 281 Area Code. You are on live with Strange World right now. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, turn 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 down your radio if you can hear yeah, me yeah. Through, through your thing. Uh, who, who are you? Where are you calling from? Why should I care? <laughs> My name is Don. I'm from uh, Houston, Texas. Cool. I just want to say, what did you do to me? <laughs> you guys, are, you ruined my life. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm about, uh, I, I'm I, about I, maybe a month and a half in this. Oh, no. How, and, how, well, much, started, how much sleep uh, have you lost? What's that? How much sleep have you lost? Uh, I do okay. I drive, uh, you know, I drive a few hours to work, so sometimes, you know, I have plenty of time to listen to stuff and, and to get into it well. Um, so, so, well, I'm a Christian, 
and I've been studying, you know, I was studying the Illuminati and, and the Freemasons and conspiracies and all that kind of stuff and getting into that. And I rolled across something about the planets, and the thing I saw was uh, someone showing that there's no way that you should be able to see Mercury and Venus during uh, at, or at nighttime. Sure. I said, well, okay, well, I guess that makes sense. That makes sense. And he has this little diagram where if we're always facing the sun, there's no way you should be able to see those at night. And I have this app called Starwalk on my phone that shows the all the planets and constellations and all that. And then uh, I thought, this is crazy. And then, of course, I, I YouTubed and I came across your flat, your your flat Earth clues, and I watched the whole thing. That was like my first thing to digest, and it just oh, blew no. me away. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I watched a few others, and you know, uh, some of Eric Dubay stuff, and uh, oh, yeah. uh, Russian vids. Yeah. Kind of, you know, it's it's comical, but it's almost like it actually really makes sense. I mean, I've you know, I just kind of the lights kind of turned on on some areas, but this one is like it's like the ultimate thing, you know. Oh yeah. Like, the oh, yeah. ultimate deception of where you are. <laughs> oh yeah, I, it, it, that's that's what you know. I, and I still can't believe I'm I'm talking about this. You know, I I yeah. was I was not kidding you. And if you listen to my stuff, you already know this. Um, we got a few minutes to the break, but I, I want to tell this real sure. quick. Which is, look, I honestly wanted scientists to blow this thing, you know, shoot this thing out of the water. I, I really did. I did not think for a second that uh, that I could that I could keep this thing going. Because it's like, well, I had to have made a mistake, you know, like anything. You, you think the math is wrong. You think you made a mistake on the test. You're not sure where. You've just got this funny feeling in the back of your head. Yeah. And uh, and here we are, you know, 20 yeah, the months. Math, you know, you know, I, you know I'm a, I work in accounting and stuff, and I know how math works. I mean, yeah. the, the, the equation's only as good as the person that writes it, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, if you wanted to spit out whatever you wanted to spit out, you can manipulate it to do that. And I yeah. I understand that it could work based on that, but... Man, this has been quite a ride. Of course, I made the mistake of mentioning it to my friends. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm that guy. Oh uh, well, no, you wouldn't be so alone. I doing that. And my daughter, yeah, my daughter put something on Facebook, uh, and I forgot to tell her. And I said, the first rule is don't talk about it. You know, <laughs> got blasted <laughs> on Facebook and all that. But it uh, it's been uh, really interesting. So I think, yeah. Uh, you yeah, I'm curious to first. see. I still think something bigger and better is coming. I just don't know, you know, what I, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah. It's like, look, there's a reason for this. There's a reason why this thing has gotten so much traction. Yeah. Uh, now, how long is it, how long have you been doing this? Uh, February of last year. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, relatively, this concept's pretty new. I'm taking it. I mean, oh yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm a YouTuber, it's, it's, and I, you know, I don't. I've never seen anything like this. In, you know. It's, it's Past not, five years. It's the oldest. It's the oldest one, but it's the one it, that nobody looks at because it's ridiculous. You know, yeah, every conspiracy better, guy, but, yeah. every conspiracy guy knows. In fact, a lot of non-conspiracy people have heard of it. Yeah. But it's and that's how I knew because it's, look, it's the only thing we debunk to children. It's the only thing we, you know, we put a model in the classroom when they're age six. Um, we get about like 30 seconds before we go to break. Yeah. Think, I was just going to say that, you know, I, we homeschool our children and we're in this, we're in this point, like, you know, they're in like kindergarten and like, what do we do now? Yeah. You know, my wife's still kind of an agnostic on it, you know, but she sees it every now and then she's like, yep, looks pretty flat, you know, around yeah. the cruise ship, yeah. you know, she can see the pictures on the cruise ship see, and I'm like, look at this. And, you know, and I got showed her pictures from the airplane we went on. And yeah. Hey, look, we're, 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 we're going to break, but hey, you know, teach them both hey. things, keep an open mind and uh, thank you. Thank you for calling. We'll do. Thank you, Mark. All right. See you, man. Thanks. Bye. Bye. is Truth Frequency Radio. No hate, no hype, no fear. Real people, real radio.
Welcome back to Strange World. I'm your host, Mark Sargent. This is part two of four. Uh, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. And remember, when you call in, just like the old days of radio, uh, please turn down whatever device you're listening to um, on and talk to me directly on whatever cell phone you're talking on. A uh, quote from the peanut gallery just came in. I kind of like this. This is from the Dilbert cartoon series between Dilbert and Dogbert. And even though I don't have the, the cartoon in front of me, ah, uh, crap, I can't read it. Because a phone call just came in from 845 area code. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And why do I care? <laughs> I love that line. Hey, Mark, how are you? It's Mark. Hey, hey man. So, so have you seen uh, um, your uh, your New York plate on the? Um... Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Thank you. That was cool. I oh really yeah, liked yeah. It. It's really cool because people are, are accusing me. You know, people say, "Oh, some of that's photoshopped," and I'm going, "Dude, it's because some nope, people are just it's taking." It's ordered. I yeah. paid. It's yeah. six weeks. I mean, in all truth, yes, you can Photoshop anything nowadays. I mean, you you, know, you could you could forge literally anything. I mean, hell, you could photo you you could Photoshop a president's birth certificate. You know, if you really you've know, had the money at the time. <laughs> so a license, a, a, absolutely doing seven or eight letters on a state website that's cake. By comparison, the point is, why would anyone bother to create Photoshop license plates? Look, this is people that you know willing to put it out there. So right, right. Well, that's why I sent you because I and I played with their software. I tried all different ways. I sent I sent them so you could look at them, and you made you made sense. Just go with all eight. Yeah, and it is flat. It's cool. I, yeah, yeah, you know, it's perfect. And now, now that I'm thinking about, you know, with eight letters, people, six letters, you're really limited. You, you're going to have to abbreviate something. Seven, you're also, but eight letters, you can actually get away with. Like, for example, you could put flat and then like E R T H. Yeah, or, I was or, thinking that too. Flat Earth. Yeah, uh, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. You can do flat. You know, uh, I there's creative people can come up with so, so much more stuff for eight letters, but unfortunately, eight letter, letters right now. Is limited to New York and I think California. You probably saw the California. The, you saw the California plate that that was only seven. No, I missed letters. it. I haven't had a chance to see it. I'm going to watch it after this. Okay, it's you'll you'll see it, but you'll, you'll get it. It's it i t b as in boy flat. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Solidarity. A little, a little slang there. <laughs> so I like it. I yeah. Like it. Yeah. So I, I, can't... I think I converted somebody. He should be listening tonight. Awesome. How how'd you do it? Yeah, I, I we were talking about um, actually nine eleven stuff, and I immediately hit him with the Dr. Judy Wood stuff to like see where he was at, judge him, you know, as far as there what he go. could handle. Because yep. yep. you know what, I think it's the craziest, but I kind of like her story the most. You know, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's a little out there, but I like her story the most. I do too, and. Uh, I mean, have you seen have you seen some of the newer stuff that's come out? Like that, there was a whole bunch of floors that weren't even accessible. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm just like, wow. Nice. Because if that was nice. the case, I'm, but you know what? I don't know. I mean, of course, it was you know, rigged. Sure, it, I it, think it was total, total Hollywood. I mean, it it could have been, but if that, you know, then you're talking about a plan that was in the works for a long time. You know, something yeah, it's like basically, uh, you know, like born to die. Those those buildings were built to be destroyed. Oof, that's a tall, <laughs> tall order. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. That's definitely a big one. I don't yeah, know. But at the same time, think, you know, I, I felt think the same, that's the most outlandish. I mean, I felt the same Sorry. way when I first heard that there were no planes. I immediately called BS. I was going, there's no, no, no. There was planes. I saw <laughs> the planes on CNN, obviously. You know, yeah. There had to be planes. It, right. <laughs> Right, there had to be. We had saw to be them. They were on TV. Yeah, we saw they it on there. TV. Everybody said they saw them. Yeah, and, and then, the I, and then when I watched, I actually, oh, oh, and then then when I finally watched that one helicopter shot where he was trying to zoom in and the plane wasn't in frame until he zoomed in, you know, that wasn't off the distance. Uh, and I think yeah. it was, and he said that he used the multiplier, but it didn't double the picture yeah. so he didn't do anything because he said it was oh there was a black frame there immediately after uh, it was yeah. just yeah wow yeah and i never caught it initially i know nobody did i was the, i mean no again way. i i was one of the people early on that said <laughs> that that 9-11 was a, a really bad poorly planned job 
And the more I dug into it, you know, as I started seeing more layers and layers to it, I started going, wow, actually, it's the opposite. There were so many it's layers. It's intentional. Oh, yeah. It was, it was actually very, very well done. Uh, yeah. and, and yeah. there, there weren't the mistakes that were made were meant to just so that people that would peel back one layer thought that that was the only layer they had to pin, you know, peel back. Right. It was brilliant. Correct. You know, I mean, even the, like the, like the stupid stuff, like the passport falling to the ground, you know, that they apparently came right. out of the plane untouched and unburned, fell all the way to the ground, you know, from a terrorist. Right. And well, that was a mistake I made for a long time thinking that, oh, these people are idiots. No, they're yeah. not. No, they're brilliant. No, they're they they're, want us to think that, yeah, and and go down those rabbit holes and waste seventy years of discussing it like we did with Kennedy and get nowhere. Yeah, or or I'll I'll even go so far. I'll, I'll let me segue over to the flat Earth stuff. The um the Bart Sabrell because he was the one that was supposedly you you know the 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 movie from you know funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Where, yes, where, the, yes. where the astronauts were supposedly faking the long distance Earth shots from a capsule in low Earth orbit. Oh, sorry, snowplow. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Where, where I was going, wait a minute, how'd he get that video in the first place? And then I was going, of course, because that's the backup plan. And that is, no, they didn't go to the moon, but people will think, but, it, but because they faked it from low Earth orbit, because that was the intention the entire time. It's like, well, the Earth is still a globe. They faked it on, you know, orbiting a globe. They could have cared right. less if the Apollo thing was 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 denounced as being fake or not, because they showed you video that it was being faked from a globe orbit. And I was going, "Oh, that's good. That's really really good." Because again, you peel back that that layer, you think that's the only layer, and now I mm -hmm. see it's like, I go in, because because that video would have never been leaked to somebody in the press, least of all a conspiracy guy from England. Right. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Some random person. Yeah. Some random right. guy. Just like the guy from England who hacked the uh, system and found the, uh, uh, they weren't listed as terrestrial. Oh, the NASA, the NASA else. doctored UFO photos. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it was a list of crafts and, yeah. and like captains and they didn't equate yeah. to any naval stuff. And it is, it is classic on. espionage that they have been doing for yeah, a long, brilliant. long time. It is and that is, you let people find information that is worthless or counterproductive. You let them find it. Absolutely. You, know, you don't put it in, you know, you just don't put it on table and say, Woo, doo, 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 I'm going to go to lunch. You don't do that. But you, so you make it hard, but you, you know, make it seem like a, um, like they're doing some effort to get in there. So, yeah. Right. Like it was the big victory to get the, the missing 18 minutes and it was all bull. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, do, um, you watch, do you watch South Park? Uh, I, I have in the past. I mean, I was a huge fan. Oh, you, know? you should watch. Catch up the last probably like five weeks, five episodes leading up to the election. Okay. They've been brilliant. And the last one was just, they had uh, Cartman and his girlfriend wanted to, he wants to go to Mars because he doesn't want her to see his internet history. So he goes to fake X and they wait and wait. And there's all these people who want to go to Mars. Nice. He's waiting. And then finally they bring him in for a tour and it's, hey, I'm Elon Musk. And he goes, ah, oh, fuck, a tour guide? Can we talk to somebody important? It's hysterical. That's oh, awesome. So awesome. That's awesome. Hey, yeah, and then they, oh, go oh ahead. no, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say they played it like it was Disneyland. He goes, you just have to have imagination if uh -huh. you want to go to Mars. You just yeah. have to have imagination. It was, that was awesome. Nice, awesome. nice. Like, hey, I wonder what did those guys know? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I will, I, nothing will surprise me when this thing finally breaks open. Who knew and who didn't know? Because then it'll yeah. be like, it'll make more sense, you know, like a plot, you know, the the plot twist in a movie where everything starts coming together. It's like, of course they knew, and and other people, right, of they, course they knew. <laughs> yeah. Hey, before uh, I, unfortunately, I've got a bunch of things I got, I got to read. But before I go, I wanted sure. to mention since you uh, brought up South Park, the episode. If you if you hadn't seen it already, uh, I, which I still think is very relevant to this whole thing. Which is, uh, it's an episode called Earth Canceled. Where, yes, where, yes. The, where the aliens were treating Earth like a reality show. Now, it was still a globe, mind you, but that Earth was a giant Truman show, but it was still a globe. And uh, yes. yeah, that it was, you know, that, that once the people found out that they were on a Truman show, they were going to wipe out Earth because, well, they weren't going to act naturally. Very interesting since that was done years ago. Yeah, yeah, that was a real good one. So. 
And they what they do? Oh, they ended up uh, blackmailing. They blackmailed the the, the, aliens, the producers yeah. or something. Yeah, the, the producers. The and I won't network. get into what <laughs> how, how badly they portrayed the producers and That's why. That's right. That's right. But, Too funny. Too yeah. funny. Hey, um, if you can touch a little bit on the the um, the calculation of curvature eight inches per mile squared, because that was one of the things that oh yeah yeah sure. uh, my friend was was kind of draw sucked him into it. Okay, because I, I mentioned will, that. I will. And I will he was like, it. "Really? Okay." I, I will do it after I, once I read these quotes. I will do that before I read the next I, email. All right. Awesome. All, All right. right. Have a good one. All right. See you, man. Have a good night. Send me a picture of your All plates right, when you get them. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. All righty. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. The Dilbert Dogbert thing, before we do the eight inches per mile squared, uh, Dilbert says in the cartoon, he goes, and we know mass creates gravity because more dense planets have more gravity. And Dogbert says, well, how do we know which planets are more dense? And Dilbert says, they have more gravity. And Dogbert says, that's circular reasoning. And Dilbert says, well, I prefer to think of it as having no loose ends. Excellent quote from the... Um, uh, the peanut gallery. Uh, and he also what was the other one. Uh, the other, one more quote before we do the eight inches per mile squared, which is, you know, the very powerful and the very stupid have one thing in common. They don't alter their views to fit the facts. They alter the facts to fit their views. And that's from Doctor Who. I'm sorry, the fourth Doctor Who, not Doctor Who season four, but the fourth Doctor Who. So not any of the recent ones. And the eight inches per mile squared, uh, what we're talking about there, for, the, for those of you who are listening for the first time, and maybe some people who just haven't remembered, and that is it, it, the curvature of the Earth, if you believe in mainstream science, is eight inches per mile squared, or every mile times itself. So uh, I'll show you how it gets exaggerated. So it's not eight inches per mile, eight inches, and then 16, then 24, then 32, and then so on and so on. It is it gets because it's got to get steeper because eventually the curve is going to drop off to where you're actually going vertical and then you have to go underneath. So at two inches, it's, I'm sorry, two miles, it's two times two, which is four times eight inches, which is 32 inches, right? Uh, three times three is nine times eight is 72. But if you want to go all the way up to you know big numbers, do something like 100 miles. That's 100 times 100, which I believe is what, 10,000? I think 10,000, yeah, 10,000 times eight, which is 80,000 inches divided by 12, which comes out to what, 6,667 feet. And that's a lot. And why is that important? Because at 100 miles, whatever you're looking at should be over the hill at, you know, all, you know better part of 7,000 feet and 100 miles. Now, 50 miles is going to be much, much less. But we can see islands, full-blown islands in Hawaii and other places around the world, beach to beach, you know, at, at 100 miles. That should not be possible. You say, well, it's an illusion. It's, it's a mirage. Really? A mirage that can defy all distances, weather conditions, light conditions, all that? 306 area code. Let's pick them up. You are on live with Strange World. Where are you? Who are you? And why do I care? Oh, is this live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, sorry. I'm just, I'm just listening to you and, I, and then talking to me at the same time. Hey, Mark, it's Clint from Saskatoon. How are you? I am good. Yeah, yeah. this is actually live. <laughs> okay. Well, well yeah. Well, the beginning of the show, or... I actually will, will say the date now just to um, so people don't call in after you know it's aired. But anyway, what's going on? Okay. Uh, no, I just had something about, uh, first of all, thank you for the uh, showing of the license plate for Saskatchewan. Um, I saw the little video of, of all the plates and stuff like that. I saw mine. Oh yeah, kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, and the and the Utah one from the United States is coming in tonight. So it's this is just going to get Good. bigger and weirder. So yeah, I, I was glad to get the Saskatoon one. Yeah, it, yeah, it's great. Thank you. Um, I have a thing about the Van Allen belt. You know, I'm sure you know about the Van Allen belt. You of can't course. make it through the radiation belt, and, but all that has to be BS. There's no such thing as the Van Allen belt, correct? And how could they uh, no, know? No, no, there isn't. The it, I think it was one of those. You know how some people will slip into a little bit of truth just to just to you know uh, reinforce something. Um, Van Allen was the, a NASA employee. Announced them in 1959, and mm -hmm. he said they were up there, and they're super deadly radiation belts that were massive. You know, anywhere between four thousand and sixty thousand miles thick, depending on where you go. And that no one should ever yeah. go through them. And then, of course, less than 10 years later, the, the Apollo program is, you know, oh, yeah, we're going to go to the moon. You know, John, John Kennedy's talking in 1962 about how they're going to go to the moon. And 
so yeah, there, no, no. The question is, what are the belts? I mean, there's a barrier up there. I have no doubt in my mind. But what are they made out of? I mean, was NASA sort of telling the truth when saying that there was a barrier made out of radiation? Yeah, maybe. But um, but no, it's not what they describe. It's not this huge donut, this giant donut band that surrounds the the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, so well, yeah, this is my confusion. I mean, yeah. my confusion is why even like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing in NASA. So why even mention the Van Allen belt? Oh, because because <laughs> you, you know had I mean? to like, at the time. They thought it was a good idea at the time, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I've answered this on a few things. Okay. It, it think of it this way: in 1959, you don't know crap about radiation, really. I mean, you know some things, but you don't know everything. Mm-hmm. And you think, well, you, people know what the term is, and so the general public knows what radiation is. But they don't – and so you say, well, there's this big giant band of radiation up there and because you don't want pr- the private sector to go up there. And I'm talking about the companies that that make the parts for NASA, the companies that were there before yeah. NASA like General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, those guys. You want to militarize space. So you, you, you say, OK, well, we can't put signs up there obviously. So we're just going to tell people it's real, real dangerous. But then, mm-hmm. yeah, what you were saying is like all of a sudden somebody announces the space program. And it's like, oh, yeah, let's go to the moon. It's like, well, what are you talking about? We haven't, you know, what are we going to do with this radiation thing? And even Van Allen yeah. had to retract. And you can read some of his statements on, online where he says that uh, when he went up, you know, that, that the only way you can get past the Van Allen belts is if you go real fast. I was going, what? Mm-hmm. what? I, even at our top speed of anything, even now, is less, less than 20,000 miles an hour, if you believe it. So, and that's what three hours through the belts, either, you know, both ways. No, no, you're, yeah. you're right. They didn't, they didn't, I, it was poor planning in the long run because they couldn't figure out the shielding, which is my big question to everybody, which is fine. You know, if you're a globalist listening to this, how did they get past the Van Allen belts? What shielding did they use? Cause there's only two types of metal currently common metal mm-hmm. you can use for this. And they're both really dense. One is lead, one is gold. And, you know, they're super heavy, so you don't tip the, the top of your rocket with an anchor. So wh- what exactly right. did you use to get to, to the moon and back from Apollo 8 all the way through Apollo 17 with nobody dying, nobody getting radiation poisoning, nobody getting cancer? No, no, there was no side effects whatsoever. Why didn't, in fact, why didn't they ever talk about the radiation testing before they went? You would have thought that would have been kind of a big deal, but it wasn't. Sorry, it was my little rant. Yeah, well, well, I guess it all has to be a lie anyway because they're making it up as they go along. Yeah, um, yeah. right. I guess. Yeah, but they're they're, they're I mean, getting that, they're getting they are getting better at the lies. But back then, yeah, that was a big blunder because they uh, they shouldn't have announced it. If they would have been smarter, just to have not said anything, and uh, it's going to come back to haunt them before it's over. Yeah, evidently. Um, there's there's some other guy that I got into a rant with uh, on Facebook. He was talking about the. The Earth spinning at a thousand miles an hour, yeah. and he was saying, well, "Well, why aren't you, you know, like an airplane pinned to your seat?" Uh, he said, "When you're in an airplane, uh, you know, you should be pinned to your seat, but you're not." He said, "It's the same thing when you're on Earth. We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour," and he said, "The same laws apply when you're on Earth." So my argument was, that, "Well, we're not in. A, you're in an in, a, in an enclosed environment on a plane. On Earth, you're not." Yeah. So he was trying to make it on a grander scale. Yeah. Uh, he was a globe. He was a glober, and I was close, was a flat earther. But he had a good point there. It was quite a good uh, visual that he was, uh, you know, putting out there. But it still never made sense on on a larger scale that if you're spending a thousand miles an hour, uh, you would you would still be serene and peaceful, just like you would be in, in a plane. Oh yeah, that's his point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, there's so many rotation issues we could get into. We we just don't have the time, unfortunately. But yeah, the, some of the ones to look into are, for example. What's the difference between a bullet and a plane? Because people mm-hmm. will say, well, you know, because eventually the plane, won't, wouldn't the rotation of the earth, would, you know, because they'll say, well, a bullet can break the rotation of the earth. It can leave the earth and, and you know, then you have to deal with the Coriolis effect. But planes don't have yeah. to account for the Coriolis effect. So how, how do planes land? I mean, a plane is just a slow moving bullet. And, you know, right. no one will say it. it's like, well, OK, it was, well, no, planes don't count because they don't move fast enough. It's really because that's five, six hundred miles an hour for a commercial and a couple thousand for a uh, fighter jet. What's the speed that it does make a difference at? Yeah. And, what, you know, the speed of sound, I don't think that has anything to do with it. So it gets really weird and interesting after a while. So, yeah, where's the breaking point? Between yeah, where's the breaking plane? And, yeah, yeah. Can you point. can a plane land on a moving runway? Uh, not not mm-hmm. to mention, you know, every um 
uh, every ballistic thing ever done that you, you've heard some of the shows I've done. You know, I've talked to just about every military guy that's out there that deals with ballistics, and they all say the same thing. Right. We do not take into account the Coriolis effect. I don't care if it's a sniper bullet, an artillery shell, uh, a missile, a torpedo. They never take those into account. Why not? Uh, it's because mm-hmm. it, they don't they don't have to. They're, they're, it's never, you know, if everyone thinks, it's all, well, yeah, it, we have to deal with the curvature. Really? When? Tell me who has to deal with it on a nine to five basis. Nobody, right. as far as I can tell. Curvature and the Coriolis effect does not take into account. No, when I saw that visual of the, you saw the, I don't think it was you, did it was someone else of a plane landing and then on a globe and the plane crashed. It's a little animation of a plane crash. So that was kind of one of the, my convincing points of, holy crap, I think there's points to this. Oh, yeah. if, if there was a spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, how can a plane land on a perfectly perpendicular runway? It, it can't go off on an angle. And if it's moving, you're going to go off the runway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and so, we're not talking about moving a huge amount, well, depending on what you're talking about. But the, the, the and let, let's do this because, unfortunately, we, we go up talking about this forever and i got to pick up other calls. But sure. here's, here's the big point in that people will say, science will say, well, no, the plane is locked down by gravity. I'm going, okay, when you're going yeah. east to west, is it locked down by gravity? What about west to east? Because you're telling me that it's locked down both ways. I don't mm-hmm. think you could pull that off both ways. You know, it, you know, you're right. either going with the spin or you're going against the spin unless you're saying that, no, gravity account, you know, that's the answer for so many things. But that's just the tip of the mm-hmm. iceberg. You know, it's it just it yeah. just starts degrading from there. You know, science, which is why, again, why this this particular community just keeps getting bigger and stronger, because science eventually has to back down. And science, most scientists are scared to death of talking about these things because it undermines yeah, huge amounts of education that they paid a lot of money for. And their pension. <laughs> Yeah, that too. Yeah, and that never being, you know, publicized ever again or, you know, yeah. writing any scientific books after the fact. Anyway, I got to pick up some other calls, man. But thank you. Thank you very much for sending the plate stuff. And, uh, okay. you know, yeah. I'm going to include those. Uh, every time I do a compilation, I'm going to I'm gonna just keep adding to it. So that plate will be there forever. Okay, great. Hey, Mark, can I do a quick shout out? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What, what you got? Yeah, I want to do a shout out to Barbara Burwell, who is listening as we speak, and to Monica Wallace. So hello. Awesome. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you very thanks, much. thanks, Mark. Hey, see you. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. All right, phone number to call in is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. That phone number, of course, is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. Let's get right back into a few more emails before the commercial break. This one is from Scott. Scott writes, good evening, Mark. Thanks for all you have done. Really appreciate it. Saw this commercial, and I'm sure you can find a better copy as I took it on the fly. I was chatting and just barely noticed it, then rewound it to realize what I had seen. Enough of my banter. So let me click on it real fast. And it is the Hennessy commercial, the Hennessy Scotch commercial, of course. Yes, everyone say, if anyone hasn't seen it yet, it is super creepy. I think somebody in the Hennessy group knows exactly the, the discussions that are happening on Flat Earth. Uh, check out the Hennessy uh, Scotch commercials, H-E-N-N-E-S-S-Y. Brilliant. So thank you, thank you very much for that. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to give it a thumbs up. Just, oh, it's unlisted. Why is it unlisted? Oh, he sent it to me unlisted. Anyway, it's Hennessy Scotch commercial. Awesome. It's uh, it's a great shot of uh, of a weather balloon going up. And when the weather balloon pops, the capsule you'd think would fall down but actually fell up into what looked looked like a water-based firmament, biblical style, which is really, really great. So check that out if you get a chance. Uh, let's see. Jim writes, do we have time to read this? Hi, Mark. Oh, yeah, and, and th- th- that last call was from Saskatoon. This one's from Jim uh, Mueller. Uh, I'll mention him real quick. He is the second Canadian guy, I think, to send me one. He's from, and this is actual plate. It's bolted onto his car as we speak. It's from Ontario, Canada. He gets seven letters and he got it's flat. Remember, you don't have to use seven letters. If you can do it in six, that's great. Or, or if you're um, or six with a space, also awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sending that picture. I will keep that one forever. Uh, Steve, Steph, Steph, Stephanie, it's a woman, writes, Hello, Mark. Thank you for the work you do. I woke up to flat earth because of you. Could I please have a copy of your survival guide? Thanks, Stephanie, Stephanie Adams. Uh, yeah, you bet. And I emailed a tour. Uh, 
those of you who listen to the show, you know full well that I used to have a website up called urbansurvivalusa.com because of Katrina and how that just smacked New Orleans. And I was really ticked off that nobody had any survival gear whatsoever and the whole city had to evacuate and only half of them came back. Well, the uh, I wrote uh, a survival guide. You know, I had that uh, a cool moment where it's like, you know what, I'm just going to write this form. And I did a 100-page survival guide. It's free. All you have to do is email me. And you don't even have to say hi or anything if you don't want, but, you know, say something nice if, if you can. Because remember, no matter where you go, there you are. So be nice. Don't be mean. And uh, so if you email me and say survival guard, uh, survival guide, Mark, I want the prep guide, whatever you want to call it, I will. It's only two megs, but it's a, it's a good little read. It's called Empty Shelves. And it puts you in the right frame of mind for a uh, survival situation. So check that out when you get a chance. And uh, print it out, by the way. You get it. So, see you guys. is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And what does that mean? That means a little bit of flat earth news. And all I'm doing here is I'm going into YouTube. I'm setting the filter to this week and I'm typing in flat earth and seeing what shows up. And yeah, a lot of stuff as usual. Uh, The Morgyle, flat earth debate, the Morgyle responds to Globber's arguments. Excellent. Globebusters, Flat Earth Mathematics, and Pilots and Planes, oh my. Flat Earth Q&A emails 13 by that Mark Sargent guy. Same thing with fun Flat Earth community reinforcement. Uh, I did that just because when I was watching uh, some old commercials because I was looking for just general inspiration, I found one from uh, Budweiser, which was the uh, Was Up commercial from 16 years ago. And I converted it to Flat Earth with subtitles. And I thought that was kind of fun. And let's see, what else here? Flat Earth, Flat Earth Channel, Flat Earth Channel. Oh, London Real, and he's got, uh, he's been talking to a couple of Flat Earths. He's got 188,000 subscribers. And I don't know if he has a, do- uh, a daily show, but it's done by Brian Rose, I believe. And he did um, a short little clip on one of his interviews, Flat Earth Debunked, NASA astronaut Terry Verts. Uh, where he asked him, is the Earth flat? <laughs> really? So you're going to ask a, a NASA astronaut right off the bat. You're going to just tell, ask him on camera, is the Earth flat? And what do you think happened there? You know, it's like, well, you know, he's laughing. He's like, well, of course, no, it's a sphere. I've been up there, blah, blah, blah. What do you think he's going to say? It's, it's, you know, it, I, I try to respond to this one with something like this. People will lie to you. They'll lie straight to your face, especially if they have a lot to lose. Uh, Lance Armstrong. Perfect example. I know it's a sports thing, but I got to mention it. Lance Armstrong won the uh, Tour de France, what, seven times, something like that. And he was accused of doping, you know, using, um, you know, blood swaps and oxygenated blood and, and special drugs. And he was accused of it and he denied it and he denied it and he denied it and he denied it. He just lied right, to everybody on, on camera and in committees and, and inquiries all the time, you know. And he cheated his way through and he won all these all these races and he did not finally fess up until the very very end until he you know he had no until he was painted into a corner he had no way out and you're saying well he must be a really really bad person it's like no legally every attorney will tell you the same thing and that's you know why astronauts you know you you lie until they've got you you know attorneys will defense lawyers they will if they if you can get away with a lie you will be instructed to lie, as, but you know, and the, and the bigger the secret, the bigger the lies. So that's where we are. Uh, let's see, thrive and survive, flat Earth and tunnels. And uh, trying to look, enter the stars. I haven't seen it for a while. Flat Earth, your brain watch, quasi luminous, still cranking stuff out. Uh, flat Earth asshole versus Vsauce. Excellent, love that. Love that somebody was tearing apart Vsauce, even though he wasn't necessarily a flat Earth enemy. It's always good to go after. Um, people that, that get a lot of exposure against Flat Earth. Uh, Antarctic Warrior, more quasi-luminous. Uh, 
I don't know how to pronounce this, I-D-O-N-G-E-S-I-T space Sam. And I, I, he's been cranking on a whole bunch of stuff. He even did one against me, and I told him to at least spell my name right if you're going to do something against me. Uh, Antarctic Warrior, West Truther, there's a lot of stuff out there. So if you get a chance, you know, go into Flutter, you know, go into YouTube, type in Flutter, set the filter for one week. I have to set it to one day now, nowadays just to uh, just to see if make sure I don't miss stuff. So if I have missed your, missed your things, remember, you can also email me videos, and lots of people do. So thank you, thank you very much for that. I, and by the way, also if you're out there, you know, my the, the free site I have where I started this whole thing was enclosedworld.com. Uh, the subscription site is marksargent.com where you will see stuff that is not on YouTube. There is some exclusive content on there. Totally worth it in my opinion. But then again, you know, try it out. You know, it's a free trial. And if you don't like it, don't pay for it. Uh, let's see here. Email from Bob Hennessy. I pick this up on a random YouTube. The guy said he has never seen a picture of Antarctica looking at Antarctica from the water with the sun in the background, similar to a pan around shot. I'm sorry, pan around shot concept and the fourth wall. No interference to Antarctica being fake. Uh, thanks and no need to say my last name. Sorry, Robert. I, I already did. But yeah, remember, you guys, if you don't want me to say your name, you got to put it in the beginning. KC, is that how I pronounce this? KC says, hello there, just watched a video you did on the flat world theory. Very interesting, I must say, but I have a question. If there is a dome around us, why do people see aliens? How do they get in? And satellites, how do they stay up since they aren't circling a globe? Is the North Pole the center where everything circles? Jeez, how many questions are you going to throw at me? If so, how do you scientifically prove it? Lots of questions with this theory. Um, let me just answer the aliens one because, you know, the questions never stop. And I know I put at the end of my things, you know, do your own research and ask questions. And people do ask a lot of questions. But generally, if they're just getting into it, uh, you know, I try to force them down more uh, YouTube trails. Anyway, let's pick up a call. You are on with Strange World. Where are you calling from? Who are you? And do I care? <laughs> Hi, Mark, Jen, and Dallas. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Fine. Wanted to give a note on September 11 and the TSA being born out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie Airplane, that was a comedy back in 1980-81. Absolutely. Yes, and uh, the uh, man standing in the ticket line that was a military kind of guy, bullets wrapped all around him, these big, huge guns just ready for guerrilla combat, mm -hmm. uh, let him go right to the ticket line. Yep. And the little old lady with the gray hair and all just probably at least 80 or 90, they patted her down like crazy. Yeah, yeah, wasn't that some foreshadowing? Yes, uh, so I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that movie was 20 years before, uh, you know, <laughs> September 11th, and yet yeah. I saw that very thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and peanut gallery, by the way, threw in an airplane airplane quote. It's like, surely you must be kidding. I'm not. Kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding, and don't call me Shirley. Uh, yeah, because I saw that at an airport, at a regional airport, I think in like Kansas or Iowa or somewhere, where you know they they do random screenings, and there was a lady with a cane, and you know they went you know went through the whole song and dance with her. I'm going really, and everybody in the room was uncomfortable about it. Now, granted, this was. You know, in the middle of 2002, where, mm -hmm. you know, things were still getting, you know, were still kind of high alert type stuff. But, yeah, very interesting point. Mm, great. And thanks for putting Tesco on. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, have a good night. Hey, you too. You have a good one. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, sorry, to answer that question about the aliens, do people see aliens? Yeah. Yeah. But heck, I've seen them. Uh, no, I'm not going to say the little green men or anything. But, you know, you take some night vision binoculars. You go out to any place where there's not much noise pollution from a city and you look up with those night vision binoculars. You tell me what you see. You see a lot of things flying around up there. And, you know, are they, you know, are they aliens? I th there's definitely things up there. Are they us? No, I do not think they're us. Most of them, I think, are not us. Um, are they from other worlds, though? Are they from Mars and Jupiter and Venus and all that? No, I don't think so. Do I think they are part of older civilizations, older versions of us? Yes, I do. Again, remember, somebody had to have built Atlantis. It's like, well, no, Atlantis doesn't exist. Well, okay, fine. Explain the Bimini Road. 
or explain the sunken cities off of Japan and the sunken cities off of India. And uh, explain to me the pyramids. Tell me who built the pyramids. You know, what, what civilization built it? Because uh, if you go to Cairo, I can guarantee you, you know, you will look at you will look at these pyramids, you will look at Cairo and say, yeah, none of these guys did that. Now, it's still technically a third world country. So, uh, yeah, I, I do think that there's, there's – I, I don't think that uh, aliens have any conflict with flat earth, neither do hollow earth. In fact, most of your conspiracies out there dovetail quite nicely into flat earth. The only ones that don't, and they're very, very few, and I'm going to mention this guy by name because he was supposed to debate me and he backed out because he knew he was absolutely going to be crushed, was when uh, uh, Richard Hoagland was supposed to because he believes in moon bases and millions of people living on the moon and hundreds of thousands of people living on Mars and that SpaceX and Galactic has has already happened and we already sent all these people everywhere. No, no, no. Nobody's going anywhere. Uh, look at the Orion project, look at anyone that talks about they're going to Mars. Well, you know, why are there no bases on the moon? Why is no other country besides the United States been to the moon even though supposedly we got the tech to do it? You know, why are there no people there? Why you know, I go on and on. Anyway, uh, hopefully, uh, this this KC guy, though, has looked into more videos after he sent me his thing. Uh, this one's from Jonathan. Okay. John from Ohio. He writes, I just wanted you to know I joined the Flat Earth Club about three months ago, and it's actually rejuvenated my faith tenfold. While it's exciting to learn the truth and to know what God really was in charge of, making this world, I feel abandoned by people who make fun of me to bring it up. In fact, my best friend is actually hurting our relationship to the point he runs out of the room and won't speak to me for a few days. He uses the typical arguments that we are given to by NASA, showing the doctored photos and videos of ISS and whatnot. My question to you, and what can I do to get him to even research or is it a lost cause? He's very hostile towards the idea that it is true, and I can't seem to get that halfway point with him. He got saved about 10 years ago, we're talking about Christianity here, from the evolution religion, so I do have hope he can get let go of the conditioning he's received for the spinning globe nonsense. He uses arguments like, we don't have military personnel on their deathbeds telling us about this flat earth and the fake moon missions let alone anyone involved in space travel. He brings up people like Elon Musk who are involved in high-tech fields and space. He's convinced there is a curvature of the Earth, and I know his basis is what he's been taught and what NASA says. I just wish I could get him on board with me because the people I love the most are ridiculing me for even talking about it. My wife is one of them. Any advice you can give me, I would appreciate it. We'll keep in touch and love your show, and God bless. Keep the 80s riffs between breaks. By the way, I tried to get the It's Flat Plate. In Ohio, I guess it's taken or not acceptable or something. Bummer. John from Ohio. Okay, first off, address the plate. Uh, look, you, you know, pick, a, pick a different thing besides It's Flat. Uh, do ITSFLT or ITSFLT and then a number next to it or uh, some other variation. Get creative. Six letters, seven letters, whatever you can do out there. Second, when it comes to your friend... And actually, the tip I can give you here is because if he was saved 10 years ago, if he is a strong Christian, send him straight to Rob Skiba's website, which is testingtheglobe.com. I, I cannot think of a, a richer website. And, and through that, you'll get to Zen Garcia and other people. Uh, but to, from testingtheglobe.com, which really goes into just about everything scripture-based when it comes to how this world was built and why it appears to be more flat than a sphere, that's where I would send him. If you won't listen to straight up logic and he say, oh, NASA this and NASA that, fine. Hit him, hit him where it hurts. And that is this faith. You know, have him. And then he will try, you know, after he goes to testingtheglobe.com, he will go to his local congregation and he will probably approach a pastor or whoever he needs to. And, you know, then they will try to, you know, then they will, you know, it'll just spread from there. All you have to do is put the seed in, in his head. So, yeah, for anyone from a Christian uh, faith standpoint, that's where I would go. Uh, anyone that's not a Christian, you know, heavy Christian or just, you know, other, other different faith, uh, just, you know, go to my flat earth short list. That's what I would, I would go to, which is if you go to my channel, which is Mark K. Sargent, I have in one of my playlists called the flat earth short list. 
and there's about 20 videos and I change them up every once in a while, not too often, but I try to pick the best ones from a newbie standpoint. So if, you know, anyone that, uh, limited patience, anyone that wants to watch a video from two minutes to two hours, there's something in there for them. Have them, you know, don't just throw them the Flat Earth Clues. The Flat Earth Clues is a good introductory guide, no question. But uh, there's a lot of other stuff. I still, I think, lead off with, not to play on words there, Marty Leeds, uh, Flat Earth Litmus Test, which is a wonderful introduction to Flat Earth. Uh, very logical based and easy to understand. I, I love it. So that's where I would go, John. So... Phone number to call in Well, I am queuing up the emails is 720-897. Jason, I had like six or seven emails just since the show has started. Awesome. Uh, hey, phone number 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. You are not going to get screened if you call me. So be nice. And up until now, I don't think anyone's called in you know, with any hate. Which is amazing because, yeah, any, any, because every once in a while I get a drunk and 704 area code is calling in right now. Let's pick him up. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you? And honestly, do I care? I am Candy. I'm calling from Dallas, North Carolina. And I'm calling with a suggestion for some help. <laughs> sure. You, what do you got? What's happening? Okay. So, so many times when I've been trying to prove my flat earth theory to people, they're asking, what about this? What about that? What about this? Well, I know that you have answered every single one of these questions already. Yeah. So I thought about, and, and I am more than willing to help you in any way that I can with this. If you, like, when, when you make a answer to the emails, when, when you answer a certain question, maybe put it in the description because I've found myself so many times searching through countless hours of YouTube videos trying to find one simple answer to one simple question. Gotcha. So maybe if there was some kind of description of not the whole entire thing, but maybe just a general description of what's in each video, do, what questions you answered. Gotcha, gotcha. Do, we'll do this because I, I will usually have people do this with me. Write me, you know, say that you talk to me on the show, put that in the title. It's like, you know, we, you know, uh, call you know call it call the email show caller or whatever you want to call it but I, I'll read every email anyway but put in whatever specific question they have give it to me and I will either try to answer it directly if I can if it's brief enough or I will point you to exact the exact video that will address it and okay. and and we'll go from there now when it comes to YouTube like anything the search engine is literal so and I try to tell people nowadays look, look you know be specific when you're in YouTube you know type in flat earth you know if you have a question about the sun flat earth sun you know that's all you have to say or flat earth moon or flat earth Antarctica or they just lead with flat earth and then follow with, with a word or two from the question, and it should lead you to something specific. But if you can't do it, by by all means, email me, and I, and I know just about every topic email that you know that uh, that can be directed to a specific video. I will try to do that for you. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I wasn't saying just for me in general, but just anybody that maybe yeah, that would be a I know. There's unfortunately there's so much stuff out there i mean yeah you know you know it's not a bad idea but there's so much content now where we're it's not to say that the flat earth is working against itself but there's so many videos out there that that there's is there's a lot of clutter uh mm -hmm. and i don't even if you even if you were super specific specific about some topics you might have to muddle through a bunch of them and i know i know what you're saying you know you had to deal with, with a lot of different videos and and uh you don't know which one you know some are better than others um i don't mind listening to them though because something about your voice is just like it mellows me. i listen to you all day every day at work like i oh. listen to everything over and over and over and over and over <laughs> oh that's so nice <laughs> So wait a bit now. Now tell me you're not going to sleep with my voice in your head, though. No, but I do work with you all day. Because <laughs> about to say that, that there's people that that'll say, "Oh yeah, by the way, I'll, I, sometimes I'll fall asleep to your stuff." I'm going, man, do not do that. That is just that is, you, that is something I wouldn't recommend that to anybody because you're going to wake up. Hearing about Mark Sargent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, thank you. I'm very flattered. Uh, and uh, you know, listen. If have you listened? Wait, have you listened to all my stuff? Like my old stuff too. Uh, everything. 
Oh, wow. I've listened to everything, all the interviews, all the emails, everything. <laughs> oh, that's awfully nice. Well, because I work by myself all day, so I don't. I, I mean, I don't talk to people on the phone. I just listen to you, and everybody's stuff is pretty much junk. Not everybody. Yeah, I've listened to some really good things, but some people are. It's just hard to listen to. It's boring. It's, but you've covered everything, and it, everything's very intellectual. It's very easy to listen to, and everything is answered very clearly. So I, I mean, it, it's it has been my godstone. <laughs> oh well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And before you before you go, you know, you know, if you don't mind, you know, if you have questions, if you talk to people, and if you have uh, if something comes up, uh, feel free to you know call call me on the air. You know, I'll you know get you in as a, a regular caller. Okay. Yeah. There's. There's something that I kind of want to ask you, but I don't want to do it on the air. So I'll send okay. I don't. It's about somebody else, and I don't want to blast them. Like. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. No something worries. Something that um, another YouTuber has been spreading around. So. I don't. Got it. Got it. Shoot. Shoot me an email. Just mention in the title. You know the. You know who you are, and uh, I will. I will try to get back to you as fast as I can. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, you have a good night. Thank you. You too. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, uh, Elizabeth writes, I'm listening to Edward Snowden's interview, and he asked, he has asked about Rubik's Cube, you know, that toy from the, uh, the 80s. I guess they have it in the Oliver Stone movie. I have a co-worker that can solve it. I never did back in the day. She was giving me some pointers. I think if I study the clues, I could do it now. Ooh, that's an interesting, like, Flat Earth Clues opens up different parts of your brain. <laughs> Uh, my brother, who's younger than me, solved it a few times back in the day. I don't think he learned to do it every time. I have a feeling that you solved it, correct? Um, actually, Elizabeth, I don't think I ever really tried, to be honest. Um, I was a geek in high school. Yeah, no question. Was I part of the math club and the chess club? No, I know I was not. I was kind of weird. I kind of did my own stuff. Uh, when I got to college, which is a whole other story, I was doing things that were completely different than normal nerds and math geeks would do. So the Rubik's Cube, I completely understood the concept. Uh, I just didn't want to put it in the hours because there's a formula to it. You know, there, there's certain moves you, you try, you have to do. It's a, it's a certain combination to get a square from one side to the other. And then it's just rinse and repeat over and over and over. Uh, I thought it was cool. I, I, you know, I appreciate the guys that can do it. And I know there's contests. People can rip through those things very, very fast. Uh, but no, I never did. Never did solve it. Uh, let's see. Who's next? This one's from uh, James. James is talking about the lunar wave thing, and he's talking about making videos. Can you recommend a good video tool program that I can buy? He's thinking about making some flat earth vids. I took off work yesterday due to clear skies, took pics on the hour every hour, took a screenshot from the website, smeter.net, that shows the view of the earth as we're looking from the sun. Uh, 562 area code. Let's take this one. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you calling from? You know the drill. Hey, Mark. This is Eric from Orange County. Hey, how are you? California. I'm, I'm a member of Eric from Orange County. No, there was one that the call before, so just called before. Okay. But but anyway, um, I had like a like a mental exercise, and let's see what you thought about it. Sure. Uh, and um, where we live in, in Southern California, there's a lot of uh, Long straight streets that are over twenty miles long. Okay, you know parallel streets and they're crisscross. Now I thought if you tried to wrap those streets on the globe, they would be wider in the middle. You know the streets would be wider in the middle and kind of tapered at the at the end. So I was kind of wondering what you thought about that. Um, I don't think that's how they would be. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that though because. Uh, if you listen to the the surveyors that I interviewed, especially the the planar surveyor that did big projects uh-huh. that were like ten miles and twenty miles long, uh-huh. it's not it's not the width you have to be worried about. It's the length, um, because the length what should, what happens is eventually you have to deal with the curvature, meaning you do have to adjust the road to to curve. You know, so if you're doing like he said, when you're building a city, let's say the city's ten miles wide, you have to do ten miles uh-huh. worth of curvature from one end of that city to the other. And he said that when that city's being built, and there's a reason why they call these surveyors planar surveyors, you know, P L A N A R, meaning flat plane. And you can look this up. All the f- the projects are treated like the world is perfectly flat. That is the definition of a planar surveyor. And he said that all these 
sections all lined up perfectly like Legos and none of them, there was never a curve ever, ever adjusted for width. You don't have to worry about that so much. Uh, but, but when it comes to length, going the length of that 10, 20 miles you're talking about, that's the, that's the real mental exercise because no one can, you know, every, you know, people say, well, it just lines up because you're dealing with it gradually over a period of miles and they just adjust, you know, in small doses. It's like, yeah, but eventually that concept is going to come up. Somebody, and I don't care if it's you know north, south, east, or west. Some one project, when it's butting up against another project, is going to have to adjust for curvature. And if they don't, sooner or later, even accidentally, one of these projects is not going to line up with the others. And then the conversation is going to be, well, didn't you account for the curvature of the Earth? And this guy said, not only did we not account for it in our paperwork, but it never even came up in conversation uh, outside of outside of work, you know, when all the surveyors got drunk together, or you're just talking, you know, shooting shooting the 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 crap and and having lunch together. So yeah, so anyway, that's like one of my yeah, that's one of my proofs now. You know, someone you know you know look at a map and look at if you open up Google and search for squares on a globe, you'll see that you know when they try to wrap the squares on the globe, yeah, they kind of taper. It's kind of fatter in the middle and kind of taper. Yeah. So that's what our streets would look like if. if oh, we were on I got, plane. I got what you're saying. I got kind of the latitude, yeah, yeah. longitude lines, how they they get smaller. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think that's uh, for somebody that's kind of on the fence, and yeah. And another thing is is the um, the plumb bob thing. I just kind of figured that out. Where you know the plumb bobs, they go, you know, and my dad just to, just today, my dad is a kind of religious person. He never really believed me, and th- just today. He's, you know, he's an electrician and a builder. And I said, well, what does a plumb bob do? You know, when you, when you drop a plumb bob, what does it do? Yeah. It goes straight to the center of the earth. Yeah. So what if what happens when you move that plumb bob, you know, 100 yards down and try to build a building, and that plumb bob goes straight to the center of the earth. So yeah. the building will be narrow on the bottom and wider at the top. Yep. So yep. I, think, I think he kind of got it. So he kind of got yeah. it. Excellent point, man. Hey, we got to go to break here, uh, so I got to let you go. But thank you, thank you for reaching out, and thanks for the thought experiment. Man, you're great, Mark. Thanks, and I, I, this is the best thing for you know for people that are alone out there and when, when nobody believes them. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. Anyway, have a have okay, a good one. Thanks, okay, Mark. All right. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye bye. And we're going to go to break here in just a minute. But the quick thing for James, because James says, what video software am I using? Um, I'm using the free uh, Windows Live Movie Maker. And for uh, Mac, I'm using Filmora. So that should help. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. And yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. Uh, phone number, this is your last chance to call in for the night. Phone number is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Email from David Watts from California. He goes, hey, I just ordered my plates. Thanks for all you do, Dave Watts. And it's interesting because he went away. And I don't know if It's Flat was chosen and maybe it was chosen by a musician. Who knows? But he sent me a screenshot. By the way, you don't have to wait for the plates to come in. You can send me a screenshot of whatever licensing, if you're doing it electronically. I know that some people do it. You know, they have to fill out forms. In the United States, though, it's mostly electronic. But he sent seven letters in California. I don't know if you can do eight or not, but it's a black plate. And it says ITB, as in boy, F-L-A-T, which is it be flat. So thank you, thank you, David Watts from California. Other people that are out there, you know, don't, don't be depressed if uh, yours was already chosen. Uh, you know, it's flat was already chosen. Because memory, you know, I still, now I'm jealous of New York's, which is it is flat. You know, the full thing, it's not shortened. So awesome. Uh, Jay writes, pictures I took from my car. I wanted to get some opinions on these pics I took from my car while driving west on I-90 
uh, an 80 through Indiana. It was kind of, I was kind of excited and intrigued telling my skeptical wife of the flat earth explanation of this, the small rainbow reflection off the dome, happy face question mark. This was not anything from inside the car. This rainbow was in the sky. If you get the time, let me know what you think. Thanks, man. Yeah. And I took a look at the pictures. They're, they're fine. Look, I'm more, I'm more excited that you're open-minded enough that when you look at the sky, you're looking at something different. You look at the clouds, you look at the sun, you look at the stars, you look at the moon, everything that's up there, and you look and you don't see it like we're told to see it. And, of course, you're breaking the first rule while you're talking to your wife and saying, oh, yeah, the earth is flat. That's what you want to do. That'll help a marriage. But And, in fact, I've got – hopefully I'll do it today or tomorrow, but uh, a friend of mine out in England, Ian Leahy, he wrote a song about dealing with flat earth when talking to your significant other. And uh, I will make a slideshow on that and do kind of be added to the flat earth music list for 2016, which is approaching 100 tracks. And it's outstanding. I mean, last year, I think we, we barely got 50. So uh, Corey writes, what's Corey right? Nice work on your YouTube project, Flat Earth. I have watched it several times and had often wondered the why on many of the information you explained. I live in Washington State in the Olympic Peninsula halfway between Forks and Port Angeles. I know where you are, actually, because I am from Washington State. I'm a retired military veteran and currently a defense contractor. I can certainly attest to the power of the military-industrial complex with over 30 years' experience. I am currently working in Kuwait as on a military contract. I have, for the most part, suspected NASA as giving out disinformation, and in retrospect, looking at a black budget, it would make sense to skim off NASA budget and use those funds elsewhere. You could operate that organization and what they do for far less than what they are funded for. I call them the No Answers Space Agency. That's good, too, because they give you no real answers and just CGI photos. I do have a concern... For the DUMB site projects, that's deep underground military bunker sites project going on, which I think the funds from the other programs are being poured into to make this project work. Knowing how compartmentalized government has become, I think many are not in the know of the big picture. They only see their piece of it, hence what is the big picture. This remains to be seen. I do think there is a correction with the Kennedy assassination and your themed piece of work. In retrospect, Kennedy was pushing hard for space. Somewhere along the line, enough questions were asked, and well, we really can't do that, and then the why came into play. I'm quite sure he was given the grand tour and shown the barrier, but the problem is he wanted more or less to do the noble thing. We all know what happened after that. Kennedy was a wild card. Just as Trump is, we'll say not a company man, he needs to be aware. I'm quite sure with the South Pole expeditions completed, they have been outside the barrier or they wouldn't have shot nukes at it during Operation Fishbowl. Uh, one could make an assumption that this is the reason you see the Malaysian airline crashes in the Indian Ocean, which are trying to make the barrier runs in the south that for one way or another get shot down or all we see are pieces. Hmm, interesting. They have, after all, had maps for thousands of years. Pack a plane full of friends, relatives, and a pilot who is willing, and you're off and running. If I was a betting man, and I hope I'm wrong, but if they finish these deep underground military sites and get them up and running to a point where they are, there's insurance they can support a percentage of inhabitants who selected, and you can bet we're not in, on the list, I would look for an event of major proportion to occur like nothing we have seen. Well, perhaps nothing we have experienced before, but perhaps we have seen in, let's say, a movie of alien proportions. Hmm. Uh, I, I know where this guy's going. It is my hope that for the betterment of mankind, the word will get out and things will get better. Keep up the great effort, and I'll keep watching your work. Best regards, Corey. Thank you, Corey. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Who's next? This one's, we would love to, we would love, this is from Am, Ameri, Amerilis, A-M-A-R-Y-L-L-I-S. We would love you to help reset the world. Please Skype into our next show that so you can help educate our girls the way that we can't. Check out our podcast intro. Interesting. Uh, yeah, if you want me to talk to a group of people, I don't know, you know, if you're homeschooling your girls and you want me to talk to me to talk to them directly, I don't think I have to necessarily convince them. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there, but, you know, get a hold of me and uh, maybe maybe we'll do it. Who knows? 
Robert writes, Flat Earth Q&A emails. Hey, Mark, my name is Rob, and I got a nice mention from Patricia on the show she does with yourself on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm the guy who lives on the canal boat. I love that you have various animations throughout your show, which indeed will help people who may be stumbling across your show on Flat Earth for the first time. I must, however, say that I have indeed learned something new myself from these animations, even though I thought I had all the ammunition I needed for combating globe heads and their constant onslaught of us truth seekers. And that is, I saw an animation pop up mentioning that shooting stars would at some point have to be shooting in an upwards direction near the horizon on a globe model, when in fact this has never been witnessed. It's one of those things that made me go, oh my god, I'm sorry, you just put OMG. Uh, My boat is moored up in the pretty dark area, so I get to see a lot of the sky with a little less light pollution than most areas, so I get to see plenty of shooting stars when I'm looking out on a clear night. I just can't believe this has never crossed my mind to even think that they should go different directions and goes to show that we are so heavily indoctrinated that even us flat earthers can still miss things that are in plain sight. Great show, Mark, as usual, and keep reaching out as one day there will be a tipping point, and the more we can all spread the truth, the quicker this day will arrive. Warm regards from Staffordshire, England, Rob Scott. Thank you, Rob. Gotta love the international listeners. This one is from Jan. Dear Mark, would you please send me your physical mailing address so I can send you a Christmas greeting? Have fun in Victoria, Canada. Thank you, Jan in Dallas. Oh, that's awfully nice. And that was Jan. Jan actually called in earlier. She's the one with the, um, the heavy Texan accent. Uh, which I which I think is great. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants to send me anything Christmas wise, you know, it doesn't you know don't don't go nuts. Although I, I do like cookies, you can send it to the American address. All you have to do is email me at msergeant23 at comcast dot net. I will give you the uh, address in the United States, uh, which is in Washington State, just down the road from here, and uh, I will pick it up eventually. So thank you. Uh, who's left? Kathy Dunson. She's tied to Zen Garcia, and she sent me a link. Read below, Mark, the LA, in the Los Angeles Times, in for the kill on Flat Earth. Nigeria, schoolboys turned killers, came after their ex-teachers and students. And the, the article, part of the article she sent, the killers came hunting for their former teachers, gunning them down in their offices and their classrooms. At the top of Boko Haram's kill list, were head teachers, examiners, primary school staff, and science and geography teachers whose curriculum contradicted the group's flat earth ideology. Now, despite what you might think there, Kathy, I don't think they're, they're actually talking literal flat earth ideology. I just think they're, they're lumping them in. They're just, they're just using flat earth in, in place of the word crazy. So I don't think people are – as far as I know, no flat earthers have been knocked off and, and very few have even been beaten up. I think I knew one guy that, that pushed a group you know, because he wouldn't – you know, he kept saying, it's flat, you know, it's flat. And then the group of guys finally beat him up. But other than that, I think the, the violence has been very, very minimal, minimal which is great. Uh, Jay says I, – hopefully I wrote oh, – maybe I didn't write this guy back. I got to write this guy back because oh, it's only been a couple of days. We're okay. Mark, I used to work for NASA. Still have my work ID and documents. On one of your videos, you said you wanted to talk to one of us. Message me, message me back if you're interested. Jay. Well, Jay, I'm, I will, I'm going to. Right after this show's done, I'm going to shoot you an email. I'm going to say, look, I, I don't know. Again, remember that, that most people, and I, you know, this is not one of those, you know, raise your eyebrow type of moments because most people in NASA don't know anything. You know, all the wrench turners, I knew some pretty high up guys in NASA and, you know, old school guys. And they didn't know anything because for the most part, you can't have anyone at NASA. All the wrench turners, anyone that builds stuff isn't going to know anything. The only people that are going to be in on it are going to be, you know, the super, super high brass, you know, like Werner von Braun and the telemetry guys. And the telemetry guys are, you know, the, the, the computer geeks. And, you know, don't know what I'm talking about. Look up the movie Capricorn One. That'll kind of spell it out for you. Uh, this one's from Lieutenant Goose. We'll see. Hey, man, is there any way you can get back to me about some more interesting points on Antarctica? I have a speech I'm doing in school about any topic we want, and I'm doing the Flat Earth and I don't have much logical evidence about Antarctica that works. So if you could give me a good point to use, that'd be awesome. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to have to email this guy back and, and send him my flatter short list. As far as Antarctica, yeah, there's been some people that touched specifically on it. Uh, but there's there's a bunch of videos out there that will that should be able to help this guy. Glad he's, he's talking in a school, though, about it. That's awesome. Jerry writes, hello. A friend of mine has strongly suggested I check out the enclosed world flat earth concept. I have one sincere question that seems to be insurmountable roadblock to possibly accepting it. I was told you might have an answer. This is the question. How can everyone in the outer ring of the earth, a.k.a. the southern hemisphere of the earth, see a different set of constellations than people in the inner ring of the earth? The northern hemisphere. Thanks so much. Uh, respectfully, Jerry. Jerry, this is one of the oldest questions I, I've gotten. And that is, when it comes to the sky, everything is fake. It's like a giant IMAX screen. Uh, you know, if you're going to ask about the constellations in the southern versus the northern, when, which in this case is the inner versus the outer rings, why don't you ask about stuff that's more obvious, that, like the blood moon? How is the blood moon even possible if there's no earth between the sun and the moon? Blood moon can't be possible. Or even the, the simple simple things, the, the, the less rare things, like the, the, the phases of the moon, the waxing and waning crescents. How does that happen? It can't. It's because the moon is its own display system, and so is the sun. And when it comes to the, the, the stars and the, cis, and the northern versus southern, the star systems are based on region. And that is not hard to do. We have been doing that in simulations for the last 15 years. I know because I play one of these games. And you can change the sky to whatever you want, not only based on region, but based on individuals or groups of people if you wanted to. Uh, look up the, um, the, the, the miracle of Fatima where the sun, I think that was the one I was talking about, where the, uh, the sun was dancing around the sky for thousands of people. The sun dancing around the sky for just a specific group of people. How is that even possible? We know it's possible now. We can do this right now uh, in software. The question is, is that, well, you know, is that what we're talking about? You know, I'm not saying that we're in a matrix, but the building blocks of what we are are energy. Uh, that's a whole other discussion really for another time. We just don't have the minutes to do it tonight. So thank you, Jerry, for that. Uh, let's see here. Frank writes. Uh, let's see. Audi's, Audi's moon rover set to visit the Apollo 17 buggy site and prove conspiracy theorists wrong about fake landings. Uh-huh. Okay. So he goes, please see the link below. And it's at the mirror uh, in the, the UK. It's called Audi's moon rover set to visit. Uh, well, here you go. I surmise that the flat earth truth will be raining down on humanity sooner than we might think. This article from the mirror said that a certain private company's plan is to be sending tourists to the moon by 2026. Oh, that'll be the day for the budget price of 15,000. Oh, uh, yeah, well, that right there tells you it's utter crap. You know, it, you know, the only reason they're charging 15 grand is because they're going to take their money in advance right now. They're not going to give them anything. You can't go any – hell, you can't go to Antarctica for 15 grand. You're going to go to the moon for $15,000? Add a couple digits on that, like 150000 or $1.5 million, then maybe we might be talking. I think it costs a couple hundred thousand dollars to, to go anywhere. You know, as far as uh, uh, anything above uh, spy plane altitude, as far as I know. He goes, wow, this guy even says he will go and check out the moon buggy that Apollo 17 left. Uh-huh. Yeah, let me know how that goes. Uh, it's nice of them to have given us at least one CGI photo of their proposed rover already checking out the moon buggy. Uh-huh. Yeah. And tell me why China hasn't done that. Uh, why, why isn't China? China supposedly has had a, a moon rover right now. It's been up there for two years. Bosley has not gone to the Sea of Tranquility. Why has that not happened? Uh, it looks like they'll be working on this photoshopping for the next 10 years. I'm sure it'll be pretty slick. Unbelievable. So, you know, dot, 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 sh- sigh. Frank Shepard. Thanks, Frank, for that. And, yeah, it's there. nobody's going anywhere. No one's going to the moon. No one's going to Mars. They're just going to keep kicking that can down the road until they blow this thing up somehow. Uh, we still got time left. See how many emails we can punch through. Hey, my name is Mark. I would like to know if there are any flat earth meetings or when the ne- when's the next mixer. I just moved to Seattle. I've been listening to all your clips and the videos on the net. It would be nice to meet other people that believe in flat earth. Thanks for your time, Mark Z. Uh, thanks, Mark. And yeah, I'm sorry that you missed the, the first flat earth mixer that we had, which was uh, earlier this year in April. As a matter of fact, we're probably going to have to wait and, you know, not, we don't want to do it during the winter. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably have another one in Seattle. That'd be kind of fun. I, I really love the last one. And uh, I know that you know, Patricia had one down in Houston. And I think there was an impromptu one in Los Angeles, I believe, or San Diego. 
And then they had one in England. So yeah, we're you know just, just join chat rooms until then. There's lots of them out there of varying intensities and moods. Check those out when you get a chance. Uh, peanut gallery is why is peanut gallery writing me? Hang on one second, I got to read what you wrote. One second, peanut gallery is writing. Don't forget about the propane in the campfire. Uh, movie studio only down the street, 15k. What a bargain! We saw you loved it from the video. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, peanut gallery. That's often awesome. Uh, let's see, this one's from Tana. Tana writes, Hi, this week has been crazy. Been thinking about you all week. This is my cousin, by the way. Sorry it took me so long to answer, but I really don't like email. I think I associate it with work too much, but it is good to hear from you and that you're uh, making money from this venture. I spend more than I make, such as life of a mom. I do enjoy watching your YouTube stuff. I'm just not convinced, but that's okay. I'm never one to doubt someone else's beliefs, each to his own. So awesome. Thank you, uh, Tana. My cousin, who actually listens to my show, awesome. Uh, and maybe she'll be convinced. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But you got to prove to me it's a globe, because I'm not going to be veering away from this anytime soon. Uh, this one's from Daniel. Daniel writes: There was one big budget film made. You know, because I was one of my clues. I said, look, there's never been a big budget film made about the moon. Uh, there's been no, you know, Hollywood makes movies about every moon, every everything you could ever imagine, but they don't make any movies about the moon. The closest they ever came was The Right Stuff in 1983, which is really an astronaut recruiting movie, followed by Apollo 13 in 1995, and that was it. There was no other movies made about the moon ever, with the exception of a made-for-HBO, um, I think, a series called From the Earth to the Moon. Uh, Tom Hanks, who was involved in Apollo 13 did that series but he goes this guy says hello mark for the longest time i cannot think of a big budget hollywood film which actually dealt with americans on the surface of the moon but i remember a jerry lewis film i saw as a young kid around seven i thought it was great at the time the movie was titled way way out and it was released in 1966 see right there it disqualifies it but i'll get back to that in a second uh this movie was fairly big budget for the time three million dollars but apparently bombed in returns it packed full of top film stars for the era it does actually have scenes of blastoffs, landings, horizons, walking on the lunar surface. I was only able to find an Italian dubbed version of it through YouTube type, titled S-T-A-Z-I-O-N-E, Luna. Other than the dubbed in voices, very good version of Way, Way Out. Sure, you find it uh, extremely entertaining. Yeah, okay, first off, because it was done in 1966, it predated the actual lunar movie. So it doesn't count there because, you know, the, the Apollo missions, you know, they didn't even land until 69. So, or 68, 69. So, uh, what, but that's really interesting because I'm a big media fan and I never, and I know a lot of Jerry Lewis's movies and I do not know anything about that. So if anyone knows where you can download a copy of it, I'd love to rip that thing apart because I'm sure royalty wise, I bet you it doesn't show up on uh, copyright strikes. So that's great. And yeah, Peanut, Peanut Gallery says, yeah, Airplane 2 <laughs> went to the moon. Airplane 2 has got some funny, funny stuff. I loved it so much I included some of their clips in some of the early Strange World shows because William Shatner played the, uh, the moon base leader. And I think they stole the, uh, the, the, the moon base shots from 2001. So that was really, really cool. Uh, how many more can we get to? We can get to a few more. Steph Adams, Survival Guide. I already did that one. And he wrote well, he wrote back with questions. Oh, okay. So this person who asked me initially for a survival guide followed up with Flat Earth questions. Uh, you know, I hope you don't mind if I ask you a question. I will try to listen for your next Q&A on YouTube if you don't have the time to answer my email. I wonder what you think about the fact that everyone's attention has been on Antarctica and the South Pole when there is reason to believe the North Pole is also important. The aurora borealis comes from the North Pole, the center of the Earth, hollow or not. It's the center. Is there a chance that it is a signal of sorts? All compasses also point to the North Pole, and they don't show us the real North Pole. I don't know if you have heard of a guy on YouTube called Quasi-Luminous. If you listen to this show, you know I know, because Quasi-Luminous used to be against Flat Earth. Now, he initially thought it was just a a curiosity, and and this guy made, you know, he's got 30-something thousand subscribers. And he's done a lot of videos. Uh, you know, he initially said, well, Flat Earth is a psyop. Don't bother with Flat Earth. But then he realized it wasn't going away. And the more he looked at it, and this guy has an open mind. You want to look at a, you know, an interesting mind and how thought processes can differ widely from other people. This is one of those guys, quasi-luminous. 
And now he does nothing but make flat earth videos or related to flat earth in some way. I hope it doesn't push him off the deep end, but it's very, very interesting. Anyway, let's follow up with the email here. I won't ask you to mention his name or comment on his work. Oh, I already did. Or anything like that. It is my opinion he is actually quite brash and conceited in his delivery. It's just that he is the first person. Well, you got to be confident in some ways. I mean, I couldn't be talking to you now if I wasn't confident or in my convictions. It's just that he is the first person who I've seen to focus on the North Pole instead of the South, and I've seen others since then. I think these guys are onto something. I don't know what could be there, but I'd like to find out. Thanks again for what you do. I don't know who is a shill and who isn't, but I am grateful to you that I am on a new path of discovery. It's up to each individual to take knowledge that resonates with you and leave the rest. Through research, fellowship, and time, may we all find reality for there are many truths. Truth is just what someone believes to be true, whether it is reality or not. But you cannot find reality by loving any lie. I say that to let you know that I believe that you are speaking your truth. None of us have the true answer yet, but you, sir, are also on to something. Thanks, Mark. And that was from uh, Stephanie, I believe. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie. Great. Uh, let's see here. This one's called Latest YouTube Video. Mark, this is great. What always got me, even as a child, was the fact that planes somehow dip to vertical and upside, passing to the lower side of the southern hemisphere. What is that is the footage I need to see from a distance and northern or upright position space station camera. Planes landing upside down to the lower hemispheres. That would show global or spear proof, would it not? Can anyone show me planes landing upside down from near space footage? Regards, Bill. Uh, upside down city would, would, would do for me. That'd be great. Uh, I don't think you're going to get that anytime soon because they, remember, we're talking about the same group that only took one uh, blue marble shot from 1972 until 19, uh, I'm sorry, 2015. It's 43 years and one shot of the earth. What are you trying to save money on film? Uh, let's see. Mike writes, this one's just titled Flat Earth, has a lot of them are. Are you willing to talk about the Aurora Borealis and the Flat Earth exit? I guess I should ask you if you have gotten into the symbolism that surrounds it also. I'm talking more specifically about sine wave and how we have been tricked into thinking the reverse of truth. Do you believe that when we die, we should in fact not go into the light or moon and head for the darkness? Ooh. Tough call. I can't really make that one for you. You know, it, it, it's going to come down to your own soul. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're making some bold assumptions here that there is an afterlife, and there is, and this life here is very, very short compared to the infinite universe that's out there. And by in universe, I mean other dimensions. I don't mean just huge masses of vacuous space. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm, I can't tell you to, to go one way or the other. That is an individual's choice and, um, you know, whatever, whatever conviction you have, whatever's in your heart, you'll, you'll know, I think, is I'm not going to treat it like a poltergeist movie and, and try to lead you one way or the other. Sorry. Uh, Thomas writes, hi, Mark. I am Thomas, Thomas. I am Thomas from Germany. I saw your video about flat earth. I mean, I am an intelligent man. I know we live in a matrix, but this thing with flat earth, I can't believe, although I know everything is possible. Have some things, have some more things. Do I have some more things about this? Greetings from Germany. And yeah, I sent this guy, I think, a, a link to the um, uh, everything I'd done plus the flat earth shortlist. And really, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you believe in the matrix or the 13th floor or whatever, or a holodeck or whatever you want, then you're you're ahead of the game. Because, you know, again, what are our molecules made out of? You know, we are made up of energy. So who's to say what? To, oh, crap. You know, the peanut gallery just got to me. I'm, I'm going off the air. Uh, Ten Commandments. I'd like to do a quick shout out to uh, everyone that called in, everyone that emailed me. And, uh, you know, I treat others better than you treat yourself. That's really the important thing here. Shout out to my lovely girlfriend in Victoria, Canada, Melody. And uh, everything else, uh, just email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. And, you know, check out uh, marksargent.com and closeworld.com. There's a book. Be a great Christmas gift, wouldn't it? Flat Earth Clues is a book. That's on Amazon. There's an audio version out there for anyone who needs it. And, uh, again, check uh, check me out on every – just type in Flat Earth Clues. You'll find me. Have a good time, guys.
it's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States.